by the grace of the Lord. Let us go to First Kings. First Kings chapter ten. First Kings chapter ten. Verse one. First Kings chapter ten. Verse one. The beginning of the chapter. Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told them all that was on her mind. And Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the sitting of his officials, the attendance of his servants, the clothing, his cupbearers, and his burnt offerings, uh, he offered the house of the Lord. There was no more breath in her. And she said to the king, The report was true that I heard in my own land of your words and of your wisdom. But I didn't believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity surpassed the report that I heard. Happy are your men. Happy are your servants who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who has delighted in you and set you in the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, he has made you king, that you may execute justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold and a very great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again came such an abundance of spices as these that the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the fleet of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir a very great amount of almeg wood and precious stones. And the king made of the almeg wood supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, also layers and harps for the singers. No such almeg wood had come or had seen to this day. And King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she, that she desired, whatever she asked besides what was given her by the bounty of King Solomon. So she turned and went back to her own land with her servants. Amen. Sheba the queen that we sp are speaking of today is a, uh, is a special woman of a rich kingdom that with a special way honored she was honored by our Lord Jesus Christ and she confessed that this woman heard about, about the wisdom of Solomon the works of Solomon and of the glory of Solomon a human of God whom God blessed in a very special way so that a unique person on earth with such wisdom and understanding that no other existed 
uh, like Solomon and the absolute uh, blessing that he was experiencing because of the wisdom and understanding that God was giving him and God granted him great favor because God had preordained great work to be performed on this earth and this work was to be built a unique and great temple on this earth that was very unique on all the surface of the earth and so God searched to find a man to be suitable to commit to him this very great series of the building of the great temple according to the plans of, of that dispensation of God. It wasn't easy for God to find such a man. It, it's not easy for God to find a man. That's why the seven spirits of God are sent to the earth in, in order to find one man whose heart should be perfect before God. What does it mean to be perfect? What is the perfect heart of God? The characteristics of the perfect heart are for the heart to hope only the Lord and to obey the Lord fully. And God searched a man and he found him among the children of David. And his name was Solomon. He had no characteristic of naturally of wisdom or understanding. Himself, looking at himself, he admitted that he was weak, insignificant, small, and with great surprise, Solomon, hurt by his dad and father, David, that God chose you to be king, to reign instead of me. And God said, David, not I, chose you to build the temple of his habitation. And God, not I, is giving you specific commandments of building the temple and equipping that with special servants. And Solomon, terrified after this mandate, after the burden that God was putting on his shoulders, he became king, but he recognized in himself and publicly that what God wants to do, he doesn't know, nor is he able to perform them. Isn't this amazing? Brethren, how God sees, how do we see? And when he was crowned king, and the first thing he did, because he had a perfect heart before the Lord, hoping only the Lord, he sought help from the Lord because he understood he cannot do anything by himself and his offering was the greatest that we've seen recorded in a single day in the uh, holy scriptures and again he did that in absolute weakness he offered but he didn't expect that much and the very same night God visited him And as God is the only one that God wants, because He knows the deep desires of a person's heart, 
he asked him simply what do you want me to give to you Solomon but God already w wanted and needed to hear an answer from Solomon even though he knew and the answer of Solomon revealed the absolute humility and weakness and the stated words to his reply to God and he said God you gave me a work that I cannot perform it I'm small he was 30 years old S somebody maybe would have said his age I can do everything but the power is not a result of age or of knowledge power is the result of knowing knowing of the truth and that man was fully cognizant of the weakness of himself he wasn't able to perform it, the work that God had committed to him and he expressed to God what he had in his heart you know what people say in order to understand this may God forbid me what I'm gonna say the one who is there is a saying the one who is hungry he's dreaming of bread <coughs> and God found him in complete weakness and God asked him and once he confessed and he surfaced his heart saying that I'm a small weak and insignificant I cannot do what you ask me to do Lord unless you give me wisdom and understanding he understood what the scope of the work that God had committed to him he had a great nation a subject to first King David that through that nation God was gonna create a, na a kingdom that wasn't gonna be an end to that kingdom to the ages of ages and and Solomon expressed his weakness in that regard as well but especially we're gonna to speak today not only of the love of God but especially of the absolute wisdom of God he expressed what Solomon needed and asked he also Solomon didn't even know what to ask what was needed and God replied to him ah, what do you ask me when I gave you wisdom and understanding because that's needed indeed to an extent that hasn't been granted to another human being but I'm also gonna give you what you also did not ask me but you need them wealth and prosperity because if you don't have those characteristics which are the result of the righteousness of God today let us pay a special attention to the details the work of righteousness is peace and the peace that God offers and the result of righteousness is quiet safety and prosperity what's needed peace sa safety and prosperity and a spirit of wisdom and understanding even though he, even the things that Solomon did not ask even though God knows that those are necessary in order to execute in his weakness and humility of Solomon to perform uh, with a perfect heart the work of God God granted those things and I'm, I want to say <coughs> to every one of us he has predestined a great work it's a great work 
is prepared for you, no other can do. None other. And that's why it's great and unique. And with that absolute wisdom, God offers to every one of us, even though we do not know what we need, in order to fulfill completely and eternally the work that God has done, has prepared everything ready, has given us everything. The message today is everything is already prepared. Come to me. Everything is already prepared before the foundation of the world. And whatever takes place would have absolute success because I'm not going to do it. Neither you, neither is Solomon. God is going to do it on with one precondition as long as you preserve your heart in humility and in obedience. and in perfection, meaning what remains to us is love, faith, and hope. Greater of these is love. Solomon had those things. Even though himself did not, did not know these things, and he had those not by nature, but as a gift of God, even though he knew that he had them, but God revealed to him that everything was already ready. And when Solomon woke up, he was a different man from the man that went to sleep. Today we want to be and to become a different person when this day ends from the one we are we you were we were when we came to this day a different person a, a man full of understanding and and wisdom having all the necessary ingredients which are necessary that we need to have that God has already given to us that we haven't understood yet because we haven't come yet to full realization of the truth and the full realization of the truth comes a person only when God speaks to that person that person realizes when God reveals to that person once he has opened his heart has already spoken to that person. Everything is already ready. Come. Never say, though, never have me released. Instead, we should say, Behold, your servant hears, and I'm coming to you, Lord, with joy to do your will becoming an imitator of Apostle Paul and especially of, of Christ. Today, let, we, let us say, I'm coming with joy to do your will, God, which you have ordained before the foundation of the world, even though you have filled me with all these necessary ingredients that I need in inside of me, all surrounding me. And that's why, dear brethren, after this day, Solomon started, but in reality, it, was, it wasn't Solomon, but it was God that started in the life of Solomon. God started, and in a short amount of time, he built up the w temple, even though he didn't know how to do it. He didn't know how. The most important 
thing was that he didn't know what kind of materials to use. But God had already prepared Hiram, the king of Tyre, who was a friend of King David. That was preordained for that to do for that king to do for an account of King Solomon. Who did that? God did that. Only God can do those things. And when King Hiram learned about Solomon was reigned as king, his heart was stirred up. He said, I love David. It's unbelievable that a king of King Serum, a different from a different nation. I'm gonna give you the ingredients, the materials, uh, unique materials. I'm gonna give you wood, gold, precious ingredients. And Solomon was seen the, for the work of God to be performed that God had trusted in Solomon. How was the wisdom of Solomon involved in order to, col by collaborating by love and a spirit of unity with King Hiram? I'm grateful about, about uh, with God about you. Do you are you grateful to God about your woman, that your children, your family, about your church? I'm grateful about you, King Hiram. Because I do not have workers, I don't have technicians, I don't have materials. And God asked me to construct. And God said to me, Ah, fear not, we're going to do everything for you. Do you understand, brethren, who is God who brought us today to the church? Do you understand who God is who said, Come, because I've already prepared everything. And the fame spread out to all the world-known world. What kind of wisdom is that that King Solomon possesses? Not I, but King Hiram. Not I, but the Lord. And the work was completed. And Queen of Sheba said, Who is this man? I have to go and see him. And the Lord Jesus Christ said she came from the end of the world in order to hear the wisdom of King Solomon, the one that was given by God, and to see. Is it possible for those things that I hear to be true, said the Queen of Sheba? Is it possible that what is circulating as a rumor to be true to that man who is just 30 or 35 years old? And she took a whole group of people accompanying her she heard she asked she learned and she glorified God is it possible in the midst of humanity to be a person who, who has absolute wisdom only when there's a person who has a perfect God trusting absolutely in God yes when did the Queen of Sheba experienced? The scriptures say, after she brought all her questions and serious questions, existential questions, a person that does not receive answers easily, only by the wisdom of God, when God provides wisdom and answers by His own wisdom, and the Queen of Sheba admired for the wisdom of God for the wisdom of God in man she, she didn't only see, only see the wisdom of Solomon in Solomon bestowed in Solomon but she also saw the temple that was built up by King Solomon but we know that behind that temple was King Hiram the one that God called in his humility to do the will of God. She saw the, f the food of 
the table of King Solomon. And let me forgive, let's give attention to the wisdom of God. Because the, the wisdom of God is revealed in our daily life from, by our words, by our works. And third, in details, by our food. Is there a wisdom in the food that we're eating? Because on the other hand, there is there is a lack of restraint from the way the servants were sitting and are entering and exiting. The way in our family, to say this simply, the way you're sitting with your family, the way you're resting in your family, what do you talk about? By the standing of your ministers, by the authority you have in your family and the church, but in the family is even more uh, evident. A person, a man especially, has authority by God. And how the wife is exercising authority with the children. And the children have also authority. How they have learned to be raised in the family or in a Christian family by respect and wisdom of God. How are they getting dressed? By the wisdom of God. How does a person go or is going around the house dirty or clean reverent or irreverent in righteousness or in an injustice how does a woman roaming around the house with fear of God or without fear of God how does she dress her children a according the gospel of God or according to the likeness of her wicked heart. Let me not say wicked. Maybe her narcissistic heart. How now we let's go back to the ascending and uh, of the servants to the temple of God. How do we come to the church to pray? This is wisdom of God, which is the result of the fear of God. The fear of God is what makes a person wise. And the fear of God is what transforms a person from small and unimportant to a glorious person in the presence of God and I repeat fear of God in our words fear of God in our house how do we decorate our home what do we put in what do we like to have inside our house with fear of God with wisdom of God our food what do we eat how we eat it with fear of God, with wisdom of God. How do we rest? How do we sit? How do, what do we do? How do we waste our time? Where do we find rest and peace? Wisdom of God, fear of God. Our standing of the ones who are exercised in authority within the house of God. Let us not repeat any more detail. The one who have an authority, fatherly, motherly, the firstborn, the secondborn, even the uh, smallest in age children, all those people have authority given by God. And that authority 
it is necessary to be exercised in fear of God and wisdom of God. How do we draw near to God? Desiring or in being indifferent? The first apostolic church of Christ, they were desiring the, the fellowship of the believers, the Word of God in the prayers and the Eucharistic, the body and blood of Christ. How do we come in the church with respect or reverence? How do you get dressed when you come to the church? How do you get dressed in the, your house, in your job? Do you want to be, do you like God or to be desirable by people? Do you want to cause the favor of man or the favor of God? Fear of God is the, is the cause of wisdom of God. And then my wisdom multiplies, and my wisdom is evident before God and man. Because she has results, has good fruit. The righteousness of God has results before God, which is the wisdom of God. Is God peace in the house, in our family? Has God peace, prosperity, and blessing? How the, the cup bearers of King Solomon, how do you entertain those people? What is your entertainment? There are entertainments and, and entertainments. What is your pleasure? And what do you want your family to be your ple the pleasure of family? The soul or the body? The heart or the Holy Spirit? And in the end, this is why the Queen of Sheba saw to the weak and significant and, uh, and forgive me for this expression, he said himself, foolish person. That's what the Queen of Sheba saw and she exclaimed and she admired. Is there such wisdom? Is there such a blessing? Is there such a blessed house, such a blessed husband, such a blessed wife, such a blessed children, such a blessed church? And the answer is yes, through the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit with a dominant weapon, the wisdom of God, which is the result of their fear of God. God, dear brethren, may establish us as wise, non-wise people of this world. Let us be babes in this world, but, but babes of God who put to shame the wise of this world, and not strong in this world, but weak in this world, but weak of God who put to shame the strong ones in this world. We are not, forgive me God, little humans. You are kings and priests of the Almighty God. Praise God with your wisdom your God, as God is glorifying you, the Almighty God, because you're already prepared and everything is ready. Experience those things. Glorify Him. And He's going to glorify you to the ages of ages. Amen.